and we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the pre-show. This is 3D Hangouts. We'll start the show in a little bit. We're just testing our audio and video and our internet connection. Hopefully, it's all good today. I think we're good. Hello. Hello, Jello 3D in the chat room. Welcome to the show. Colin is here. See to make me pancakes. I would like some pancakes. It is the morning here in South Florida. Hopefully you guys can hear us all okay. I might have to adjust this exposure here for a second. Let me see real quick. Nah, it looks fine. No sound. Oh no. I hear sound. Colin, turn up your audio. Double checking. Colin was muted. <laughs> mm. Waffles are better. Yeah. Yes. Belgian waffles. Probably my favorite. But blueberry pancakes, like multi-grain blueberry pancakes, are so good. Oh, man. I think I want first watch. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> he was muted, says Colin. Woohoo. Yeah. Oh, flapjacks. Hello, Tom Jacobs in the chat room. Um, <laughs> what are the odds today for mic malfunctioning? Yeah, right. I'm excited to show off this, uh, this Ninja Flex wheel. I've been bouncing this around a lot. It's kind of fun. Raspberry Pi pancakes. For the that would be really good. By Yanni over here. Yeah. Hey, Yanni. Welcome to the show. Oh, man. I was talking about food. <laughs> yes. We don't eat breakfast. We just drink coffee. Yeah. So the stream's looking pretty good. Um, YouTube says it's a bad stream just because I'm dual streaming here. Um, Facebook is coming in okay. Facebook's a little bit weird. I don't know how to decipher it through their UI. Like it doesn't say like how many bits are coming in and if they're rated, but I think it's fine. Okay, okay, okay. What are you printing in the background, Pedro? I am printing this KiCat base, but it's just to test out settings on the mm -hmm. Sigma. Mm -hmm. The R17 Sigma. Hello, writer. Cool. I'll answer all the questions about the NinjaFlex wheel in the, in the Shop Talk segment. Oh, cool. It looks like Tom just printed a NinjaFlex wheel, too. What'd you, what, what application is it for, Tom? Because I think this would make really cool RC, you know, RC vehicles. It would be really nice for them. But this is for a skateboard, like a longboard. So it has to be really strong. So although this was a test, um, it's just to kind of get the, the fitting right. Um, yeah. I haven't printed something this kind of big with NinjaFlex on, on such a large nozzle, the 0.6 nozzle. So it was, it was a nice little test to kind of see. It kind of ate through a lot of it, though, the filament-wise. It was like 150 grams or so. No sound on me. Hello, hello. Oh, I, I never unmuted myself. There you go. See, this is why we did pre-show. <laughs> I wouldn't know that because I don't have. I forgot all about. Kind it. of. I have decibel ratings over here or whatever. But oh, that's let me mute again. I need to grab the mail. Okie dokie. Grabbing mail. Let's see here. Cool. So Tom's working on a little robot with gimbal motors. That sounds awesome. Please share it. Uh, when, when, you, when you want, and we'll share it too. Facebook updated a graph where they contained update video API. Okay, says Yanni. Any good SLA printers uh, other than the Form 2? I wouldn't recommend the Ember, unfortunately, from Autodesk. Well, it's definitely over yeah. the price of what the Form 2 is. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Angus uh, Devin from Maker Muse is testing out a SLA kit. Check that out if you haven't. It does great, great reviews and content. Cool mug, says Ryder. Hey, Raider, welcome to the, Ryder, welcome to the show. 
James Ross is in the, in the house. Yes, we did see a tiny portion of the F8 conference from Facebook. Kirby is asking if the coupon code has a wheel in it. I forgot what the coupon code is. No, it doesn't, to answer your question. Kirby wants a form too. I think I do too. I'm a little, um, what do you say? Hmm. I just don't like the process of SLA that much. It's, it's a bit of a kind of extra, a lot of extra steps for kind of prepping your model, cleaning it, and that, that sort of thing. But maybe the form two is a little bit better. They do have like a finishing kit and things. Oh, thank Greg, you thank for you for the idea. TFT feather case. Awesome. Yeah, thank you um, for the comment. What are your thoughts on the Obsidian 3D printer coming to Kickstarter soon? I really am not looking at Kickstarter printers. That's not uh, something I look for. Um, but if they make it, you know, hats off to them. Cool, Tom sent a link to Instagram wheels. Hello from Denmark, thank you for the comment, sir. Uh, Emil, I think, sorry if I butchered your name. Let's oh, see. get rid of those spaces. I, I know, for yeah, they're there for kind of the YouTube thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a YouTube limitation thing. I think I pasted it twice. How are we doing on time? Five minutes? Yeah, about five minutes left. Okay, I wanna see Tom's. Ninja Flex wheel. Sweet. Look at that. Looks cool. Ooh. Let's see if I can share it. Zoop. Very nice. I am following you. What? That's dope. Very cool. Wow. That's dope. Yeah. And it's not fully, it looks like it's um, shelled out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, good, a really good way, way to, to kind of save uh, on material, but still get uh, sort of the the mechanical strength you need, I guess. Is this the original Ninja Flex or the Semi Flex or Cheetah version? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, Colin is trying to get the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So am I, I only have one so far. They're, they're kind of hard to come by. Yes, Ninja Flex rocks. Super squishy, yeah. Yeah, Ninja Flex is absolutely possible with a Bowden setup. You gotta print slow and 285, uh, printers that, 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 that use 2.85 diameter filament seems to be better at Ninja Flex. For Bowden, yeah. yeah. for Bowden system, just because it's got, uh, it's more, it's just thicker and can be pushed through the nozzle easier, I think. Oh, Hobby King branded flexible filament? I didn't know they had a oh, flexible filament. We did not know that, interesting, thanks. Yeah, we we have an interest. Raider is asking, can the print be, uh, stick to things? I think it can because yeah. the bottom's super flat. Uh, this one's a little too heavy. This, is, this oh. won't hold its own weight. But Maybe. we did print suction cups, which we'll talk about during the shop talk segment. <laughs> Sixty millimeters Kirby's, a second on it. Kirby, you should have like a contest, like a Pi Zero W contest. <laughs> Increase your sub count. Yeah, seems to be the thing to do. I oh, print we at still 60 have millimeters iron. a second on the Ultimaker 2 Plus, says Stuart Riggs. Yeah, you can print kind of fast when you have uh, your, your settings kind of dialed in. Yeah. I print so I'm going to guess that. Some geometries work really well at 60 millimeters, better than some other things. Yeah, I'm going to guess it's probably uh, not TPE, the uh, Hobby TPE? King stuff. Yeah. It's probably TPE, TPU. It's probably looks. TPU. The Hobby King That's stuff. That's what this is, TPE. TPU. Uh, TPE? No, TPU. I thought this was TPE. Nope. The original Ninja I, Flex. TPU. That's what the site says. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, we can go up to 90 millimeters a second with yeah. simple geometries. Yeah, if you're printing something as simple as like a, a unicorn band horns, or something, yeah. or, or something that has just two shells, you can print pretty fast. I wouldn't print Benchy at 60 millimeters, you know, because there's a lot going on there. But like, hub, like O-rings, gaskets, you know, very simple geometry. Yeah, that's insane how fast you can print it. Obviously, you want to have like a you know 50% under speed for like the infill and stuff. If there is infill, but if there's not infill, it's all shell, it's all perimeters. Then yeah, you can print pretty you can fast. Take a chance of it. Yeah, and we notice that sometimes printing at a uh, faster speed, uh, some of the Ninja Flex prints looked better. On um, Prusa, he prints at 70. Nice. Yeah. Low spot has semi flex on clearance. Forty dollars a spool. Yeah, Ninja Flex oh. is a bit expensive. It's fifty bucks for most uh, suppliers. It's a good deal alert there, Kirby. Yeah. You got one minute. <clears throat> yep. There's an empty spot over here. All right, guys, we're gonna start the show. So we'll be back in. 30 seconds. Hello everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noed, designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Rest, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share three printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Yes, oh my goodness, this is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks, the audience. Welcome everybody to the show, thank you so much. We are live streaming, quick programming note. It is Wednesday. We do the show on a Wednesday, it's live. It's about an hour long. You can tune in live with us on YouTube and Facebook. So we multi-stream this thing. So I hope everybody's doing well. This week's coupon code, we have one. Every Wednesday we have a coupon code, an opportunity to get 10% off your order from anything in the Adafruit shop, excluding uh, Adabox and gift cards. Especially but everything cards, else, yeah. it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all good. 10% off, use um, TFT Wing is the coupon code. We'll also have another coupon code later tonight for Ask an Engineer. That is later tonight at 7.30 p.m. You can come and show off your projects. Uh, whatever you're working on, you can show it off live with Lamar and Phil. And then later then, Ask an Engineer at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Full new products, Raspberry Pi, great stuff and more. So this week's project is an update to kind of a couple weeks ago project. So this is uh, an update to the feather box. It's a 3D printed case, multi-purpose enclosure for the Adafruit Feather line of boards. It's a lightweight, portable Arduino compatible board. This is a specific design made for the TFT Feather Wing. That is a 2.4 inch TFT display. It's touch screen, resistive touch. Got colors, lots of colors, like 200 colors. This is a 3D printed case. Of course, like I said, uh, you can fit a 500 milliamp battery inside the case. I showed it off last week and kind of showed you guys and walked you through all the steps. I did a small update to it, which I will show you now. This is the update. Whoop. I put Visa, Visa mounting tabs. So uh, Bill Binko, who runs AT Makers, asked uh, it'd be a good idea to put some Visa mounts. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Is it Visa or Visa? V-E-S-A. It's, it's sort of like your standard mounting system for uh, you know, LCDs, uh, displays, that sort of stuff. I don't actually have one, so what I did was I made this little 3D printed bracket adapter thing. And uh, the, the VISA mounting system is kind of simple. It just has two sets of holes, two sets of mounting holes. These are the 75 millimeters, so they're 75 millimeters apart, uh, M M4 size holes. And what I did was I made this little bracket thing that has the, the mounting holes, 
but also has a mounting hole for a quarter 20 tripod insert. And this little tripod is a little swivel head thing. And then this thing here is a, a little kind of selfie stick thing, but it has like legs so I can kind of prop this up. So this kind of really adds to the project and makes it um, more accessible, I think, which is kind of neat. So um, this is up on the, the GitHub repo and Thingiverse and Pinshape and Imagine. So you can, you can get these files if you want to kind of add that extra thing to your project. The, the mounting tabs are like kind of embedded into the design. So you, this comes in three different kind of designs. There's one with the tabs, one without, one that's slimmer that exposes the feather. This one fully encloses it. Um, and then the cover is kind of standard, just snap fits, um, which is pretty nice. Not a lot of mounting screws needed, only four. And plus these two, but that's kind of it. That's all I got for it. I kind of made this last minute and um, printed it out. So leave that there. What's the weather like today? 84. Oh my goodness. Oof. Don't want to step outside. So that's uh, that's the feather <laughs> TFT wing. You can get it now. Uh, we do have the feather wings in stock. So uh, if you want to pick up a little display for your feather, you can totally do that. We have uh, libraries and, and, and demo code. It has an SD card reader, so if you want to load images. Um, we also have this little fancy touch uh, kind of demo where you can kind of touch the screen and draw stuff. It's a cool little demo using the Adafruit GFX library. Good stuff there. You can load images on your SD card and do all sorts of uh, cool text and whatever. So a lot of different project ideas you can have with it. So if you want to see more project ideas that uses this, check out the Learn system. There's a bunch of kind of things you can do with it. Good stuff. Um, yeah. How's that? I like that it's actually in stock. Usually when we do projects, oh, yeah, yeah. That's a big <laughs> the deal. week of, everything's out of stock for all the parts yeah. that is required. That's so right. you want to get that, jump on it, save yourself some money. Sure. Yeah. Use coupon code TFT wing. Yep. Our favorite feather wing. Uh -huh. Moving on uh -huh. to He's some other um, prototyping stuff. That yeah, we're sure. On. So that was this week's project. I forgot to show the, <laughs> the thing. Oh, this yeah. You want to go over project. the guide and stuff? Some of the. Uh, I did. Oh. I kind of br browsed through it. I think but. the highlighted point about this is you need to shorten your headers for it to uh, mount as flush as you can or yeah, as small point. as you can. That's a good point. We have some uh, short header pins that you can buy, but if you have some header pins that are already soldered, you can cut them in half. If you check out the project video, I, I show you my technique. No, it's not a technique. Just you're just yeah. cutting it short. Yeah. yeah. I like these slide switch. Um, instead of using like jumper cables, I took a, some of the excess pieces of the header pins. I cut it in half and, and sort of soldered it at a right angle. It made this really low profile kind of uh, jumper cable plug. So you can plug this into the enable and ground pins kind of effectively turning off the, the three volt regulator. That way you can still recharge your battery and um, turn the circuit off, but still recharge the battery, right? So if you're using a JST slide switch adapter, you're cutting power, so you can't recharge it. So this is kind of a smart way to do it. And uh, kind of using the space in between the, bo the two boards, is kind of smart for cable management. So I kind of route the cable through there, both the slide switch cable and the the, uh, the the JST cable from the battery, so it's kind of a neat way to kind of manage your, your your wiring and stuff. So, if <laughs> I think like if you don't do this, will it all fit? Yeah, it'll fit, especially with the thicker version. This is like the slim version here that exposes the feather, making it nice and thin. But it's up to you. So you got choices, and everyone likes choices. Good stuff. Again, cool. TFT feather wing or TFT wing. Tiff, tiff twig. Hmm. Mike in the chat room is asking about creating snap fit parts. Do we have a video learning guide on it? Yes, we do. Yeah. Mike? Search okay. for, I forgot what you named it, just snap fit parts. Yeah, it's like better, layer by better snap fit. Yeah, you can look at the liber, layer by layer playlist and there's a whole bunch of stuff. It'll stick right out when you, when you browse through it. Hey, Eric from Make Me Lab is in the chat room. Hey, what's up, Hi, Eric? sir. Good morning to you. Cool, so let's do the Woody prototyping segment since we talked about the feather thing. I'm Add a couple of on. things. Put it over here. Yeah, Pedro's got some cool stuff cooking. So 
Zelda has been consuming a large yeah. portion of your free time. Sorry. But it's all for research, maybe. <laughs> There's obviously a bunch of Switch pro uh, projects that you can make. Nintendo Switch? Okay. Nintendo Switch. And, of course, there's a bunch of cosplay stuff there from Zelda. Oh, my God. They have ancient weapons, ancient guardian weapons. These mm -hmm. are all light-up swords. Perfect for I keep for calling it uh, Zelda Breath of Fresh Air. <laughs> Breath of Fresh Air. <laughs> So I got the, um, what's it called? The Guardian Sword from right. Zelda that I'm modeling out here. Of yeah. course, this is not the color it's supposed to be. I know it's supposed to no, be no, like no, a translucent blue. This mm -hmm. is just a test to see if the size measurements are correct and if I can fit all the electronics components in here. So this is the Guardian Sword. Yeah. It's quite a uh, yeah, I think different it's the plus ones. one. Yeah. yeah, there's a, fit, a couple of them. So it's printed in three different parts. Um, you'll probably have to slice it up in a couple more parts just because I'm using the huge 12 by 12 oh, bed yeah. plate on the Type A machine to print this on. Okay. So it is all shelled out. You'll have two sides on this that'll snap fit together. And then all of the electronics and components will go inside here. We got the handle, which will be able to hold a cylindrical battery. So that'll go inside here. We'll have a LiPo charger on the bottom so we can charge the uh, LiPo backpack with a trinket that'll control all of the LEDs up here. And then the little part for where the little gem goes inside here, we'll just have that orange and I'll add more details down the handle, but it's about 800 millimeters long. Yeesh. And uh, just a really cool cosplay project when you were looking through all of the swords in your inventory. Um, <laughs> this is why you've been- Yeah, I wanted to show it and be like, hey, this would be a cool sword. No, I was gonna say that's why you put so many to. hours in there just so you could grab oh, all yeah, of the- sure. uh, you know, fill up your inventory with all the cool weapons that they mm -hmm. have. So you can sort of pick and choose which ones uh, to print out. If you guys follow the Twitter account for Adafruit, we just retweeted a really awesome, um, the bow and arrow that they have in yeah, there. Yeah, the ancient arrow. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a choice between this and, I forget the other sword. There's so many different swords. There's the ancient sword, cool. the, the guardian swords, there's uh, spears, there's uh, bows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so a couple of things I have left to do on there. Uh, obviously, reprinting this in the proper color. Um, I want to have these uh, cut out just like this part is. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like how it is in the game, where it looks like there's just a couple little pins that are holding everything yeah. to the rest of the handle. So add that, all of the, um, the grooves for, I guess, it looks like a circuitry type. Yeah, it kind of um, looks like traces running yeah, along like traces. the blade. Yeah, and I think uh, one thing would be interesting to do is to have like uh, mounting holes so that you can f you can uh, insert screws and kind of yeah for connecting both together. parts together yeah because glue glue works but uh, glue works but it can fall apart right. if you could easily do this without having any adhesives uh, yeah be nice although you are going to need the extra screws to connect mm -hmm. all that together so we use tabs on both sides to connect the pieces together yep um so we're using so i just sketched this out uh, right out of uh, Illustrator, imported yeah. some SVGs for doing the detail work, but the lofts are created by tracing the whole canvas inside of Fusion 360 and creating lofts uh, for these smaller parts because you're just not able to create the, um, the what is it, like the a chamfer, chamfer part for it, just because one. of the, yeah, it's like a chamfer for the smaller piece of the blade. You can kind of see, it's, har it's harder to see red colors the on, overhead? Any can on any sort of cameras. You can kind of see here how it bubbles out right here. Yeah. And it was a little bit tricky to figure out how to get the lofts to work on that, but yeah, just because you, of all the curves that are happening yep. along the uh, yeah, side Yeah, when there. you create in, uh, offsets, sometimes uh, going uh, in inward with your offset might uh, yeah, cause the geometries to collide. Yeah, so that's, that's why sometimes it doesn't work. It's because of little parts like this. Yeah. But that's, sometimes it's, op, you know, just cut it off maybe, mm -hmm. but it depends. It was kind of hard to get uh, reference images for this because there really aren't high-res images low of it. Yeah. So I had to take some screenshots. And they're mm -hmm. really itty-bitty. And for size comparisons, if you guys remember the Gunblade project, it's about the same size. So Well, you may, you measured it. <laughs> kind of want it to be the same size, yeah. Oh. So you can see You might there. have to step back if you want the whole thing in frame. There we go. Yeah, so wow. it's the same size. It's huge. Should be about the yeah. same thickness. Yep. But obviously the difference is that the weight will be more just because of would, all the electronics. Will you be printing like this with a bigger nozzle? Um, or is I the don't have a 0.6 millimeter nozzle for the Type A machine nope, yet. So don't. I am going to order one just so we can 
there's no detail that um, like intricate detail on the Z that, that I'm going right. to need a four millimeter nozzle for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to switch over to the six just uh, to lower the time. I think it takes about four hours for each part. Okay. Um, so we'll try that out. So, yep, this is what I'm working on. Sweet, More man. cosplay stuff. Nice little glowy light up sword. Um, it's like these weapons were made for NeoPixels. Oh, now. yeah, man. It's because they like Neo a lot swords. of them have that nice glow to them. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. Uh, probably in two weeks I should be done with this. And we'll release this. Sweet. As always, good stuff, man. All well, right, you have another. What do I have? Uh, <laughs> really cool portable monitor for uh, that you've been prototyping. Yeah, so um, uh, we we offer quite a few different monitors and, and uh, displays, TFT displays. So this is the five-inch TFT display with a TPF four hundred one driver. That's where the kind of the display driver is broken out onto its own breakout board. And what I did was I wanted to kind of model a version of this enclosure so that it had a power boost and a 2500 milliamp LiPo battery. So that's what I did. Um, there's still a little bit of things to do, like adding a tripod insert down here at the bottom. But I think it would be a kind of a nice project, just kind of an update, because the, the kind of other one that we made has a lot of mounting screws. And this one uses that snap fit kind of technique, I guess we could say, for the enclosure. So this kind of has these little nubs. You can see there, the nubs. I don't want to take it apart fully because it might burst. But hey, really, really nice kind of update to this project. So again, it's a um, five inch display, HDMI. Uh, and then this is the power boost, so you can recharge the battery and that sort of thing. So I have here is a little PC. This is like a $200 PC called the Kangaroo. And you could use a Raspberry Pi, but because this has Windows 10 and- No, there's some times where you just need a full-blown PC. It's a full-blown PC? Yeah. I guess to you do, that. you know, whatever driver stuff that doesn't work on the Mac. Uh, my ca use case is updating the firmware on the Sigma. Is this on? Yeah, it's on. The display's not. Working. Is your battery dead? No, it's it's blue. Let's see. Should be on. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's okay if it doesn't work. This is I why the project's not out yet. No. No. So it it's works. a it's a nice 800 by 480 display, I believe. Which looks actually very very nice. Yeah, on it's this. pretty sharp. It's got a pretty decent viewing angle. Uh, I still have that film here, so it's not touch. We do offer touch versions, but this is the non-touch, mm -hmm. a little bit more, a less expensive. <laughs> a little bit more, less expensive. That's, okay. So, mornings. Look how cool this looks. Itty bitty, tiny, yeah, it's portable, full-blown Windows PC on here. Uh, 2,500 milliamps. So mm -hmm. I don't know, an hour or something, depending. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know what the voltage draw so this is. This would be perfect for <laughs> But like, there's a yeah. data sheet, but this works great for Raspberry Pi projects. Can I just throw this in here and be like, this is what I'm thinking? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what I'm thinking, guys. Do you get my drift here? Maybe a hinge? This is, a, this is the SNES controller, but it has, it, it has USB. So I'm thinking to wire this directly to a Pi Zero. There's enough room for a Pi Zero in here. You see what I'm saying? So I'm thinking a, a, an updated Pi Girl or a variant of Pi Girl in this kind of format it would be kind of interesting. I, like I could put the Pi Zero in here. I've seen a lot of people do that. There's plenty of room there. Um, I've already taken this apart and looked at the traces. They did a really nice job. They're, they're already exposed. The pads are already exposed, so you can solder right to them. Really nice. So I think it, this will make a fun Pi Girl project. But for now, we'll probably release this as a kind of, here's a nice update to the display enclosure because uh, it's a nice display. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And I think um, after the sword, one of the projects that I'm going to revisit is the five or the seven inch display. And that's what I'm actually going to use to attach this to the, yeah. um, the PC, the little kangaroo portable yeah. PC is what I'm going to use to attach to the back Go of this because it, it is uh, such a good size for that. We're able to, at first I wanted to enclose it, but I'm thinking bracket, so I don't have to worry about all of the ports on the outside, so you can mm -hmm. easily access all those. And just take a look at what the size looks like that on a seven inch. Yeah, it looks really good. It's bigger. Yeah. Same resolution though, I think. 
Yeah, it's mm -hmm. 800 by 600, I want to say. But perfect resolution for a desktop PC. You can see all, everything is on here. You can even run, um, obviously, anything, you know, Cura and the... Yeah, I don't think you can run Cura on the... On Raspberry Pi. Pi no. But you can run Octoprint. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Kirby's saying uses. that. Uh, glad you guys are... Uh, coming to the good side of Windows. Oh, yeah, yeah there no, are like a Windows. lot of instances, like I said, yeah. where you do need a, a full-blown Windows PC. Um, so the th what I'm waiting for to actually start on this project is, should we go into it now? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's, let's The way that these HDMIs stick out like that drives me nuts. <laughs> um, yes, it does. We have shorter cables. I think we have like the one-foot cables, but yeah. still there's this huge amount of chunk on the connectors pieces. Yeah. So on Thingiverse, somebody made a Raspberry Pi project, and we were looking at the instruction guides for it. He had a really cool PCB um, HDMI connectors that's going from, it's like, it looks like an L, like an elbow that's going from one to the other. This one? Yeah. Yeah, so if you can see here, right yeah, should be, yep. So you can see here there's that this little so adapter awesome. thing, and it's kind of meant for the Raspberry Pi, so you can mount the Pi directly onto the back of the display. And the way to get the HDMI is to just put two connectors on a PCB. So we did a little bit of work, a little bit of searching around, and we found these cables, which are like, it's called super soft. Uh, they're meant for FPV mm -hmm. use. So these are HDMI connectors with the super soft uh, ribbon cables. Um, so we're gonna pick these up. We got a couple of them on order, and we'll see how they turn out. Maybe we'll stock them in the store. Really cool. There's just so many different types. There's mini, and not just the type, but the actual way it's mounted. So mm -hmm. right angle, 90 degree. Up, 90 degrees, flat, down, yeah. just depending on That's how you right. need to mount your right. board. So we so got here's sort of a, a couple of them. How it will look like. Super slim. So for Raspberry Pi projects, definitely these would help out a lot. So if you want to pick these up, I guess you can get them right now from AliExpress. But we're, we're going to see, we're going to get some samples in and see if they're, they're mm -hmm. worth uh, order because it kind of takes a while to get these um, about from a month, the manufacturer yeah. in China so yeah we'll see this is what gets me out of the bed tiny HDMI connectors that are able to adjust sure. the length of the yeah, cable because yeah, uh, <laughs> take a look at this I, I took one of our cables and I, t I took it apart and I was like you know this is before I found these short slim profile ones and I was like yeah I could just wire them up right I could just wire these up there's like a a lot of wires in here and it's a little intimidating even for me like mm -hmm. I was really confident to do it I was already in the mindset that yeah I'm gonna wire 20 wires to this one connector for my slim Raspberry Pi project but if if I can get it on a PCB and have like a really flexible ribbon cable then let's do it this is all research here just to kind of see how how much work am I gonna have to invest into kind of wiring up my own HDMI cable yeah I already, a lot. I already had my mind set on having to do all this crazy work, but seeing those mm -hmm. super short um, HDMI. Yeah, the way CD I found cables. them is I searched for the wiring diagram for this to, to, to kind of know how to wire this up. And then some, I saw these pictures of these PCBs and I clicked on it, it was from AliExpress. Mm -hmm. I was like, what, this is dope. So hopefully that'll help out with some of the projects, um, make them a little bit slimmer. So if you're looking for some slim HDMI cables, FPV super, super slim is the search word to look yeah. for. Oh, so, one thing I forgot to mention is um, I think I want to make this into a laptop. So oh. that'd be cool. Little mini yeah. laptop desktop slash. Oh, that's the Cano keyboard for everybody asking. Yes, people we ask. do have these in stock. Uh, unfortunately, you have to get it with, it with the kit. The yeah. kit. It's like a two hundred dollar kit or so. I think, uh, it's pricey. I think it's cheaper than that. $100? $169? I don't remember. Something like that. Yeah. We should have them in stock, though. We got, I believe, two or three different types of these. Yeah. One that has a monitor, one with just a Pi. Yeah. But definitely recommend it. I really like the way these keys work. That's right. Uh, we also have the, uh, what is it, R R I I key. That's pretty close. Yeah. You can get Sorry. that one separate. Good stuff. Everybody is liking the Windows PC. Yeah. Woo good, good. TFT Feather Wing. TFT Wing. That's the coupon code. Yes, we all want the flexible, slim HDMI cables. Yes. Um, we, will, uh, we want them now. Yeah. <laughs> we know. need them yesterday, but we, we need them like a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just search for FPV HDMI, and those should pop right up inside of uh, right. Express. Yeah. 
I mean, they're they're really good for FPV stuff. I think for um, that's what GoPro made for monitors, for GoPros, and stuff would be really monitors, cool. yeah. I think for videographers, it'd be a really useful thing as well. Yes, wicked little mini laptop. Like an Ewok. Nice. <laughs> like an Ewok. For made for Ewoks. Nice. Okay. That's kind of what we're cooking up. We got another thing. Um, yeah, do we have time wheel? for it? Yeah. Which one? The ninja wheel? Yeah. Just Oops. because it's so cool. All right, cool. So, so for a while now, um, ninja flags. we've looked at our Evolve skateboard. And ever since I got the all-terrain carbon skateboard, um, when we were testing it out, we were like, oh, man, you can run over bumps and go into grass without yeah. having that hard. All-terrain you know, is, is really nice. It's definitely the way to go for skateboards. For an electric skateboard, yeah, it's pretty mm -hmm. nice. So what so I've been wanting to do we is... We look at the prices for these. We actually can't upgrade the bamboo skateboard that you have. Oh, because I it's have so a, old. Yeah, I have a Gen 1 mm -hmm. of the Evolve skateboard. And even when you, when you looked at the, the tires for this, it was like, what is it, three times the price of a Ninja Flex yeah, spool. I, yeah, I wanted to pick up some ABEC 11 flywheels. They're like 97 millimeter um, in diameter, so they give you a little bit more elevation for your board. Um, so I wanted to get those. They're like 100 bucks from the reseller. Mm -hmm. You could probably get them for a little bit cheaper on eBay or something. But uh, I thought about printing our own, so using ABS and NinjaFlex. Uh, so this is sort of a test to, to see how this would work with uh, NinjaFlex. So this is fully printed in NinjaFlex. It's, uh, I forget the infill percentage. Do you remember the infill percentage? I think it was about 30% infill. 30? I want to say 20, because it was like default. So there is some infill going on here. Uh, and it is very squishy, it's very bouncy as well. So it bounces quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You could probably bounce it across Actually, I think the you room. were gonna demo it right over here, bouncing Yeah, it. I don't wanna do that anymore. <laughs> um, but this, this came out very phenomenal. The layer bonding is excellent. And the, uh, yeah, the layer bonding is really good. The surface finish looks pretty good. There's a little bit of treads. I'm probably gonna get rid of these treads. They don't really make that much sense. They actually yeah, make the ride a little out. bit more bumpier. Yeah, they? They make the, well, indoors it does, but maybe ah, it yeah. helps outside. Um, you know, you put two Z, uh, 608 ball bearings inside here. Um, so, um, there was a little bit of support material that came off. I optimized the design. So this is all Ninja Flex. It's just sort of a test for fit and finish. The next test was to kind of dual extrude it. Uh, so this outer kind of grip is, is Ninja Flex, the classic Ninja Flex with a shore hardness of 85A. And then this is ABS, just your typical ABS, you know. <laughs> I haven't printed an ABS in a while. So this is printed on the Sigma R7, wait, Sigma BCN 3D, not the, the R17. The R16, I guess. So this one's optimized for printing with out any supports? No, this one still uses supports. This is the older one. The newer one is on the skateboard. I'm still testing it. So I don't want to bring the skateboard because it weighs 20 pounds. But, um, Kind of an interesting test. I think these would make really cool uh, RC car wheels or something like that. Um, just the scale of this thing was, 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 was nice. I printed this with a 0.6 nozzle, so we shaved off quite a few hours of printing. Uh, the layer height is uh, 0 0.4. Could have probably went a little bit higher, but it still has that kind of good um, kind of layer height where you don't really see the build lines when you're from a distance. Printed on glass. Um, we did try to print this kind of on Kapton first, which is probably ideal, but uh, ABS seemed to work okay on, uh, on glass. Uh, one, of, one of the tips would probably be to kind of use um, a little bit of acetone on the bed, wipe it down with a little bit of acetone with a heated bed. I know that's, that's bad, um, so do it in a well-ventilated area. Uh, but this came out great. This was a, I don't know, jeez. Uh, we'll, we'll have more data to share, but right now I don't remember how long it took to print. I think like uh, six hours, five yeah, hours, something about five like that. five and a half hours. Yeah, that would have took like 13 hours or plus if it was on a 0.4 nozzle with a 0.2 layer height. So you're saving a lot of time. Um, this weighs considerably less than uh, the, the ABEC 9s that I have. So these weigh less. Um, you know, there's still a lot of things to do, a lot of improvements. I would make the Ninja Flex a little bit thicker, the layer of it, because right now it's a little hard when you, when you skate on it. So... Just a kind of work in progress, just trying to see um, how these two materials work well together. And um, that's a nice little test, I think. Colin is asking how we printed this part, the dual extrusion part. Yeah, you can sort of see right here the shiny part. This was down on the bottom right here. And because of the way, I know this one did have support material, but you redid it where you don't need yeah. supports. Yeah, so. there's yep. just chamfers everywhere. It's just flat on this side. 
Bam, like that. Same thing with this one. You can see the flat, shiny side. Yeah. I just printed flat like that. Yep, ABS glue or, or, or slurry or ABS juice mm -hmm. is, a, is, a, is another thing you could use to get your ABS to stick to glass. Yeah, we just use acetone on the bottom. Yeah. And that should work pretty but Yeah, good. we used it. We didn't need any Kapton. We did print it with Kapton at first, and then we tried without. And it, was yeah, it, it, work. it came right Oh, it didn't work? No. Oh, with the uh, with Ninja um, Flex. Ninja Flex, yeah, yeah. 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 So that worked out really well. Still got some testing to do. I think uh, using a 0.6 nozzle definitely makes a lot of sense here, especially for the scale of this thing. So pretty cool. Still some more testing to do, but that's what we're, out, we're at with it. Mm -hmm. Did it over the weekend. I was kind of interested. I really, I've been wanting to do it for a while now. Yeah. So I was, I was to originally going to take on this project, but my wheels, I already have all terrain wheels on it, so it doesn't really mm -hmm. push me to, no, to well, do it. Yeah. No, it's just a fun test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I it's, an, say it's it a nice uh, accomplishment for printing NinjaFlex, how well the Sigma can push out this NinjaFlex, because it's not, it's, not, it's not the best. You know, it's one of the most challenging materials to print. Mm -hmm. So is APS. Yeah. So, so this the two is like, oh my god, headache. Yeah. So this should be able to work on regular skateboards as well. Um, yeah. I you think just the have to. Is enough. Yeah. yeah I, I think when we upload it, there's going to be two different versions. Yeah. One that has the um, the little gears for yeah. inserting into where the uh, motor driver is for the uh, electric skateboard. Sure. And, and of a course, plain one. one one of the the kind of tips I guess you can take that I can take away from this is like uh, you know test test pieces. So getting the tolerances for, for, for mounting uh, a 608 bearing in here, just print out a small piece of it, you know? There's mm -hmm. also another piece that I don't have here, but it's a piece that kind of locks into the, uh, what do you call it? Oh, the drive gear. Sees. Yeah, so this is actually what's inside the new design. There's this little kind of end stopper that, that prevents the, the bearing from going all the way inside. And this little guy is kind of like a key for the, for the, for the, the drive gear it's the thing that kind of is you know mounted to the shaft of the motor so uh, the, you know the motor of the skateboard it's an electric skateboard by the way uh, so you know print little pieces out first and then print out your big pieces because uh, you otherwise you waste a lot of material so that's one thing I, I, real quick let me jump into kind of a layer by layer thing I want to talk about like what what I kind of experimented with uh, as far as like slicing this because the designs okay yeah whatever but I think optimizing your designs for your toolpaths is really important. So let's take a look at Simplify 3D. This is the hub, just the hub, not the, the grippy part, just kind of like the ABS part. And let me show you kind of what default is. So I'm going to put the layer extrusion to whatever the default is. I'm going to drop my shell count to two because that's normally what you do. And I'm going to hit prepare to print. Now if you look at the, oh, it looks actually pretty good. Let's get rid of this infill, change this back to rectilinear. And this is what you typically would get if we weren't optimizing our toolpath. You get sort of this infill that's in between the spokes, in between the rim. And that would probably work OK. But I think there's what I wanted to do. Oh, gosh, come on. I wanted to do a, a little bit cleaner toolpath. So there's a lot of movement that my printer has to do in order to execute these kind of uh, infill patterns, right? So one thing I did was like, well, why don't I just increase the shell count so that it's nothing but concentric lines everywhere. So I put this up to four and I changed my extrusion width to, I kept playing with the numbers until something came out really nice and tight. So my magic number was 0 0.67 with the 0 0.6 nozzle. So now when I prepare to print it, you'll see that the infill is now just all perimeter, perimeters, right? So it's this nice concentric pattern that's really easy on the printer because it's just moving in this nice straight line. And you know, there is infill right here in this area and you kind of need that. But if you're, you have this, these kind of walls that can just be perimeters, why not make them perimeters instead of infill? So. Optimizing your toolpaths is, I think, an important thing that anybody can, can kind of uh, work towards. Right? I think we mention this every single week, but it's worth mentioning every single week. <laughs> no, it's a great little lesson here. And I keep learning it as because this actually wasn't optimized with this thing that I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. this, there, this has like infill and it's squishy and it's like maybe too squishy. I think it's and, too. and maybe it's not really optimal for kind of 
a load balance. I don't know if that's the right word, but when you spin this, you can kind of feel that it wobbles a little bit, and that's because the infill is, is not kind of evenly placed, maybe. So I think this would kind of fix that a little bit. I don't know. So that's it, just to kind of look at how I went about uh, printing this out, optimizing the, t the tool paths. So there's a chamfer at the bottom here, so that's why there's no infill. So just chamfered that out, and uh, hopefully no infill or no, no supports. Over here, it's just kind of a little bit, yeah. The skate wheel is a little bit interesting because it's not in the exact center like I thought. I thought it was like symmetrical, but you, you kind of get closer to the surface here. The, the bearings get closer here and they have more distance from here. So I don't know, it's just something, there's a reason behind it probably. But I don't know, that's, that's all I got for it's the kind of a small layer by layer. So just play with your extrusion width and um, your shells until you got something that, you, uh, that your printer can print. Yeah. Kirby saying that uh, maybe it's because uh, like a tire, it adds weight where it needs or uh, trim off some material. Yeah, true, true. Cool. All right. This week's shop talk. That so, was shop talk, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was over later. Oh, well, it was a mix of it all. <laughs> this week's shop talk, Ninja Flex suction cup. So last week's project, with the yeah. Lego uh, tape, uh, people were asking, could we actually make suction cups as well? Uh, specifically, yeah, Chris, Chris Young. Young. People, <laughs> yes. Chris Young asked us. He, he thought it was a great idea to kind of do these suction cups. So we made some of these suction cups. They're a little bit different. They have more surface area over here and a, a little bit of a, a cup here. There's some overhang there. This is printed with no supports. So you can get a closer look at that. You can see the overhanging. There we go. So you can see how it kind of did pretty well. This was printed on glass. It had a little bit of hiccup here on the, on the corners, a little bubble. But uh, for the most part, this, this, this helped, this worked pretty good. There's a little, you know, loop here and uh, whatever these things are called, little key thing. And, uh, you know, we're testing out weights. I, I measured about uh, 150 grams. This can hold up probably more. And, uh, it, you know, it sticks to glass and acrylic probably. Here I have my, uh, my iPhone, whoops. Yeah, I'll do the test. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <sighs> okay, so this one was actually printed with Kapton tape, which some people were also asking, is it possible to do that if you don't have a uh, glass uh, heated bed? Mm -hmm. But Kapton with heat works really well. And let's see. Mm. Oh, it's dirtier. Sorry. No, the demo had it working Yeah, um, a lot better. Yeah, I have some alcohol over there if you want to clean it. Yeah, so here's a good it. testament to like, hey, this only works if uh, you have a clean surface, just like any suction cup. Mm -hmm. You need to clean the surface. So that's what we didn't do. And you know, there's a little bit of holes here, so maybe that contributes to it. But when I tested this out, we, we made sure the surface was clean, wipes free, you know, get all the grime and, and stuff. So we got a couple different versions of it, but you can do this now it's, if you have a project that needs it. Look at that, pretty good. I think better on the side because it's, it's being mounted on the side. My phone is, I don't know how much it weighs, but it's probably more than 150 grams. So this is cool. So this reminds me of a project or, or more of a product that the Pie Hut sells. And I'll show it to you in a second here. I'll leave the, the overhead on and then I'll quickly Go to that. So if you want to do this with your pie, this makes a great pie project. Check this out. Ready? Yep. This is called the Zero View. You can get this at the Pie Hut for seven bucks. So this is a little PCB that kind of has these suction cups and you can mount your Pi Zero W with the Pi camera module. These got these little standoffs. So this is a pretty cool project. And um, if you wanted to DIY your own version, I guess you could with the Ninja Flex. So that's pretty neat. Um, Great little project, I think. Stick it on your window, record some time lapses. Super cool. Yeah, good stuff. So you can get this from the Pie Hut, or if you want to make your own, I think you can. Yeah. Suction cups, Ninja Flex. Oh yeah, uh, Daniel Nori, uh, Daniel Nori, actually made this a couple years ago. If you want to look at here, he actually did this in um, 2016. Um, just kind of a little experiment, so. Yeah, it's the exact yeah. same design. It's pretty much. Yeah, I just kind of made it, too. It's got that stick. But 
it was more of a fun experiment, but I think testing it with actual weights and uh, sort of a project, I think, I think, I think it works. Yeah. Print it on glass or, or uh, what do you call it? Capton. Capton tape. Yeah. yeah. So I think it'll work. Thanks, Christian, for the idea, for the kind of recommendation. Try it out. We tried it, and I think it works. Yeah, it took a couple of different attempts. Uh, originally, yeah, we were right. trying to model it like a real a, suction cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that didn't work. So you just need more out. flat surface. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's what, what actually made it work there. Yeah. I mean, that flat surface. You might not even need this suction cup area. Is yeah. that really doing anything? I don't know. I mean, it <laughs> helps you push it in, but you don't really otherwise, I don't think you need mm. it. And if you guys checked out the Instagram, you could see me attaching it to a sliding glass door. And you could see from the back side, when you push up on the mm. sides, you can see how it's uh, gathering more suction too by yeah. just doing that. That's helping it out. 3D uh, Dren again uh, uh, on, on the YouTube chat is saying that an iPhone is 625 grams. And there you go. That's a lot of grams. Well, this is uh, not the plus. It's, no, the, it's uh, the just seven. the seven. Yeah. So, but it holds. It's cool. holding. Yeah, I think the Pi Zero project, the zero, zero view, I think that's like the best kind of way. You want to mount your mm -hmm. Feather or an Arduino to a window for whatever reason, uh, you can do that. So oh, Now it's sticking really good. It's stuck too good. Yeah. I'll never remove it now. So super cool. I'll uh, we'll probably jump on that Pi. Yeah. What, what printer did we print this on again? This one was with the Type A machines. Okay. Yeah, man. That Flash Forge. Uh, we just need glass. <laughs> we do have glass. We just need to attach it to it, but uh -huh. re-leveling with the Flash Forge. Um, it's, it's not, just not, it's not I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's a lot more easier to do it on okay. I like how you built your eyes and showed how frustrating <laughs> it is to even think I mean, about it. Maybe we could it. use a little, they have, um, for the back, where you're able to add a little, like, shiv, so mm -hmm. the leveling That's right. um, is easier to adjust right. that way right. for different build plate mm -hmm. surfaces. So you just have to do that. Cool. Dendroflex. We have a ton of Ninja Flex in the shop. We yeah. have like every color, yeah. <laughs> just about. Um, yeah. More and more though, we're seeing the need for 285 filament, especially because the Sigma could just print Ninja Flex so well. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably look at getting more 285 stuff for I that. I think so. Yeah. Uh, cool. It's actually cheaper on our site for any of the Ninja Flex spools if you it take is. a look you at that. It is, you get 10% off too. On top of that. Yeah, all right, cool. Good margins. This week's Community Makes and Time Lapse Tuesday uh, video, it was released yesterday. This is a super cute little squishy it's a turtle. Turtle. So it has live hinges that print right on there, so you're able to um, squish the limbs. This is not dual extruded. This is printed in two yeah. separate pieces. So what that enables it to do, you can nah, not see that that well on the on the um, top down view, but on the side, if you add like a little Gemma with a vibration motor inside mm -hmm. there. It could help it scuttle along like one of those brush bots. So that's really cool. That'd be a great brush bot. Yeah. Or an internet connected thing button. Mm -hmm. So the head pops out when you push on the tail as well. And if we take a look at the inside of this guy, you can see the way that the hinges that print in place are actually allowing the little limbs to um, yeah. bend back and forth. Great way to get a springy kind of function with hard rigid PLA is to kind of make this little pattern here. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool use of it. So it's the bottom piece that has the legs attached, the head, and then these little H clips that connect yeah. the body to the shell area here. So the so kind of body is uh, printed flat, right? That little area yes, there? Yes, this is printed, printed upwards. Like that. From there, up. Yeah. He's actually used the, um, I forget his name, Jake Jake. Yeah, Jake Jake. He designed him. Yeah, you can take a look at his site. So he actually reused this concept, concept from one of the older um, designs that oh, we featured one? before. The yeah, mini monster truck. Those yeah. are so cool. Where cool. the axle is able to squish. There you go. This is showing that on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. See? Screen. So same sort of uh, type of concept for that, except on uh, limbs for this little turtle. Pretty cool. I like it. Super simple print. Check out uh, Jake Jake. Gavin really liked this little guy. <laughs> <laughs> and for the shell, uh, couple different designs that you could choose that he uploaded. Mm -hmm. uh, we went with the spiky one and then we used uh, the color fab glow in the dark filament for this. And it looks really good. Just snap this guy together like that. And boop. Super simple little toy. 
And good way to test out any. <laughs> Yanni um, said this make a good bobblehead. Yes, it would. Oh yeah, you're right. It's a good way to do it. Oh yeah, you should have did that to the head as well, so you can bobble up and down. Huh. But check it out if you guys want to test out tolerances for printing these little springy uh, legs and mm -hmm. arms. Cool. And it takes about half an hour, so not terribly long to print mm -hmm. this guy out. And of course, uh, like I was saying before, it'd be cool to add a little motor in there so it could be like, scurrying mm -hmm. around. Neat. And that is this week's really cool community make for uh, Time, Time Lapse Tuesday. Yeah. Oop, good job, Jake Jake. Yeah. Super cool. All right, well, I guess we're going to move on over to the rest of the community makes. There's some cool projects. I'm going to run through them a little bit quicker than usual. This is a really nice arcade uh, joystick project for, of course, Raspberry Pi. This is from uh, Dervix on Thingiverse. Looks really cool. Printed on his Prusa. I like it. I like me some buttons and joysticks. So oh, if you're looking nice. for a, a build, a little nice fun build, this is a fun one. All right, here's another one. This is awesome. Aiden's back with another video, how to get uh, watertight 3D prints. So if you want to learn how, and his techniques and experiences on how to get watertight 3D prints, check it out. Watch his video. And an ad came up. <laughs> Good. Every time. I, I like how the ad. when we're logged in, it does this that. This is an interesting kind of just, look at these robots. This is, this is like, look at this robot. He's like, hey, how you doing? Draw me like your, one of your French robots. <laughs> <laughs> the googly eyes. A lot of fun. Articulating robot. The photos just look great. Even made a little mini robot son for his robot pal. <laughs> There's a Lego city going on here. I think he's it's terrorizing the, the Lego city. No, he's a friendly one. Make no, robot it says friend. in the uh, description. Oh, he's he, yeah, uh, uh, make robot friend, guys. This is why you want to do it. Look at the look at the detail on these uh, the these connector like, pieces. Yeah, these little joints. They look beautiful. Looks it's cool. great stuff. Let's check that out. It's by uh, K4R5 on Thingiverse. This project's really cool. This one's from uh, Bill Any, Billy. This is pretty much the same concept that, you just, that we just talked about. The little hinge, the live hinge, or springs or whatever. Yeah. Prints and place springs. It looks like it's a, like an updated version of this. With Look at the, the wheels. Uh, body. It's dope. I want to print the wheels in NinjaFlex and print this in ABS or something. Looks so cool. This is pretty cool. Lots of nice detail in there. Yeah, look at the steering wheel. Look at the stick. Oh, a little, little wheel in the back. <laughs> pretty cool. I like it. This is from, yeah, Bill. All right, next up, this one is another Raspberry Pi portable project. We showed this off earlier. This is actually what inspired us to look at those super thin HDMI connectors. Yeah, look at that. Look how he's connecting the Pi to the screen with <sighs> HDMI. It's so Beautiful. awesome. Love it. And some people were asking, do the they have one. female connected version of these? Yes, they yes, do. Yes, they do. They got mini, they got standard. Oh, man, look at the back. Standard, look at that that chamfer. Oof. This is a challenging one. Wow. So much warping going on there. Yeesh. Nice volume knob. This thing has everything and then some. I like that rocker switch there too. Yeah, it's beautiful. Great, great build. Nice yeah. different way to yeah. build. Real cheap a... build too. You can get all the stuff for like, I don't know, pretty cheap. Get all the parts off uh, AliExpress. Good stuff. Might take a minute. This is uh, from Walter. He does some awesome stuff. I'm going to turn the volume up on this one. Let's check this out. This is a, this is a musical instrument. It's got like a, like a crank and a gear system. So these are notes, right? And this is like, uh, you know, pipes. And then this is just balloon air. So, so when he rotates it, it's basically <sighs> playing the tune. This is public domain. We won't, we won't get in trouble, right? That's so cool. So those little notches on the on the the ring on the cylinder are kind of releasing the air so that it goes through these little tubes, making a note. So mm -hmm. very, very interesting. Cool way to kind of combine uh, kind of gears and uh, air <laughs> to make music. Pretty dope. You can check out his YouTube channel. He does a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff with gears. He's like a gearhead. This is Walter. <clears throat> I like his description. He's like, I'm just just old guy enjoying my retiring with machining and 3D printing. It's definitely what Does we're some do. great <laughs> stuff. Yeah. It's awesome. I can watch this all day. <laughs> That's really cool too, stuff. So shout out to cool. Walter for sharing that. All his files are available to download. 
This one, I just found out about this one. I was checking the pin shape blog and this came up. This is a, uh, a pocket braille finder. So braille is a kind of the language uh, people use that are hearing impaired. Uh, blind. Oh, seeing impaired. Seeing impaired, sorry. <laughs> wow, I need, I need this. <laughs> so this is cool. You kind of rotate this, um, this, this wheel and you get a letter and then it kind of Gives you the, uh, the braille version of the it. Braille version of it. Translation. Six dots. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. Uh, here's another version of it. Sort of printed in nicer colors, I think. Yeah. That's so cool. I think this a, is a rendering. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. But it's really cool the way that the braille letters are able to rise up and down according mm -hmm. to which, uh, what letter yeah. is on there. So you can see how it works there. In check that, that out. Yeah. Very cool project. I like this. Yeah, maybe those are renderings. I don't know. They look really nice. So check that out. It's by uh, Dave C L K on Pin Shape. Here's another one on Pin Shape. We found real quick. I think Pixie. we showed this one off yeah. before, but that's worth noting. Here's again. Power Boost Raspberry Pi Zero. Makes a little camera. Very nice little package. And you got a little ring on there for yeah. attaching a an additional lens. Yep. I think the software can generate gifs for you. So check that out. This is a full instructable. Or on a full or right up on make, so you can check that out too. On pin shape, I saw it, shared it. Who was that by? This one's by um, N Brewer on pin shape. Next one, this is from uh, Geraldo. He made a, a Raspberry Pi Zero W camera. Oh, so people are saying that the way that this is at, it's being blocked out. Oh, well, that's why you have to go to the site. So maybe I can do this. There you go. That's better, that's better. Sorry about that, guys. So this one's cool. Check that out. And that's it, I think that's all. Oh, wait, 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 here's some more. This one just came to us this in, the, in the morning. This was really cool. Yeah, this is from a YouTube channel, Make It Yourself. So it's basically a... The bow and arrow from... <clears throat> from Zelda. Breath of uh, Fresh, Fresh Air. Air. <laughs> yeah. There it is. That's like the iconic weapon is, is mm -hmm. that air arrow. <clears throat> so check out this awesome well, I'm video. I'm glad I didn't start doing that one since this is <clears> really <throat> yeah, good. Yeah, this was printed on the form labs, and all the electronics are made of it, which is pretty awesome. Got the jewels, Got some jewels. Some individual NeoPixels. Uh, he, he wrote his, his animations code as well in Arduino. Nice little uh, write-up post of the post-processing required yeah. to build this. Different yeah. materials, EVA foam, and kind of some wooden dowels, and mm -hmm. leather working. Kind of with a bit of a uh, weathering uh, yeah. tutorial on there, doing some dry brushing. Yeah, this is great. So check out um, Make It Yourself on, on YouTube. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Ouch. This looks great, though. Super great finish. There Very it is. Awesome. Awesome job, sir. We've subscribed. We'll check out more of your videos and sharing it now. So. Sweet. <laughs> this is good stuff. Um, and then this one was actually just now. This was in the, in the pre-show. This is from Tom. He's working on a cool little robot Should with Ninja Flex wheels. Should be in the chat room. It's dope. So check out Tom's work. This, uh, from Hobby King. Yeah. Uh, flexible film in there. Mm -hmm. So some nice uh, kind of... Uh, a sweet little robot. Yeah. Good stuff. Cool. Well, that's this week's Community Makes. I hope you guys like them. Check them out. We'll have the links later in the show down below. And if you have any Community Makes, Pedro, you're way out there. It's just me today. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you want to share some project with us, you can tweet us, you can email us, whatever, whatever. You can even share it right before the show. Right yeah, it's right. a good way to do it, actually. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's the show. If you want to pick up anything from the Adafruit Shop, you can support us, the lovely company, and your maker habits. You can save money, too. If you guys have any questions for this week, pop them in the chat right now. I'm trying to go through these. <laughs> Looks like everybody's been self-answering, so... Thank you guys for doing that, and thank you, Kirby, for moderating the chat room, keeping the peace. Yeah, we just tweeted out um, our Be Kind policy, if you guys want to check that yeah. out on Please Twitter. Please be excellent. We'll try to be excellent. I'm trying to get Pedro in the shot. It's over there. Answered that one, answered that one. Yeah, it looks like every, everything's through. been answered. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Yes, for, there for will be a giveaway later tonight on Ask an Engineer. Yep, you have to call in live. You call a phone, 
payphone. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to talk. So it's you've very we've hard actually to do. been talking I'm about having to do or uh, doing this exact same thing on our show. Although yeah. with us, we're going to do it through the little Star Trek communicator that we built so. yeah. uh, because we still have the little Ting SIM card that we're using for mm -hmm. all of the, yeah. uh, the, the phone calls. Yeah. So we're we going to start doing that. It. Cool. Well, if you want to join uh, the folks later tonight at 7.30 p.m., we got the show and tell. <clears throat> That's on tonight. You can show your projects. I'll be there. I'll probably show off the this guy here, DFT. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this guy here. This week's project. And if you guys want to follow us for behind the scenes of what we're working on, check out our Twitter and Instagram yeah. pages. What is my purpose? <clears throat> you tell me the weather. I am cool <laughs> with that. <laughs> I am cool with that. It's going to scurry off. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us. This is 3D Hangouts. I lost my voice. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, were these spring parts printed with Ninja Flex for the little turtle? No. no it's hard PLA. These are all just rigid PLA. Yeah, I think the for cool the thing about that is uh, you, can, you can achieve springiness with hard, rigid plastic like PLA. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that wavy yeah. pattern. Remember that's the stretch bracelet from Emmett back in 2012? Yeah. That was like the sample print. It was like this stretchy bracelet. And it was printed in this kind of crazy pattern like that. Just imagine that, but as a bracelet, and you can like wear it, and and uh, it, it took like 30 minutes to print because it was just a single perimeter. Super dope. Yeah. So check it out if you want to take a look at how these springs are made. Very easy to implement in uh, other designs. Typical. I'll take it. I got a rocket launcher here. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for having fun with us, guys. Appreciate you guys. That's going to be it. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that safe? That's it. Thank you, guys. We'll be here in two weeks. We got uh, Windows. Getting oh, yeah. We're not so going to be here next week. We week. Sorry. Um, we got a ton of Windows. They're going to, I think it take like four days to take all of those out, replace them all. Yeah. But um, when we come back, we'll be, uh, should be nice and tinted. It'll be not, a lot more cooler. Energy efficient. More energy efficient. But we'll see you guys in two weeks. If you want to follow progress on any of the projects, uh, follow yeah. us on all the social media channels all up there. Yeah. All the usernames are usually the same. Cool. All right, guys. Until next time. We, say, we, we usually say we don't, we don't have a catchphrase. Yeah, we don't have a catchphrase. <laughs> we'll see you guys next, next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.